Today is Valentine's Day, in case you didn't realize. In fact, if you're a man listening to this and you just remembered what day it is, don't panic. There's still time to run to the store on the way home from work, pick up a gift. Most of the cards and flowers probably get picked over by now. But fortunately, I've always found that the pots and pans and kitchen utensil aisle of the grocery store is well stocked around Valentine's Day. So grab a box of forks, a spatula, maybe a new spaghetti strainer if you really want to spoil her, throw them in a gift bag. You're going to have a very happy wife. And I'm willing to bet a romantic evening as well. Take my word for it. But of course, not everyone is interested in romance. And for some, um, even a a brand new nonstick frying pan wouldn't be enough to pique their romantic interest. This is the so-called asexual and aromantic community. And fortunately, they are the ones that the Washington Post is thinking about on Valentine's Day. Uh, This weekend, WAPO published a piece written by a woman named Samantha Cherry or Sherry and titled, uh, it was titled, quote, How Asexual and Aromantic People Make Valentine's Day Their Own. Now, the article begins by telling us about a 37-year-old person who goes by the name Obel Pax, Odell Pax, rather, and the Post reports this. Odell Pax identifies as both asexual and idem romantic, which means that she does not have any desire for sex, and she doesn't make any distinction between romantic and platonic feelings. So what to do with a holiday that assumes romantic and sexual attraction are the norm? This year, she's doing what she usually does on February 14th, making time for self-love and self-care. For her, that means soaking in a hot bath before curling up in bed with with her three stuffed animals, Findle, Marcia, and Sylvia. The last two names are uh, named after trailblazing trans activists Marcia P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Yes, why not? I mean, why not tell us the names of this grown adult stuffed animals? And if that's not enough, we're also treated to a picture of Odell with the stuffed animals, along with this caption. This is the caption under the picture. It says, Odell packs with her three dolphin stuffed animals, Sylvia, Findle, and Marsha, from left to right. It's a very good thing they specified from left to right, because otherwise we wouldn't know for sure which stuffed animal is named Marsha and which one is Sylvia. So now we know, and we can sleep easy tonight. Sleep easy, anyway, with the somewhat cruel satisfaction we all sometimes experience after seeing someone else's utterly pathetic and depressing life and feeling deeply relieved that it's not our own life. I I try not to delight in the misfortune of others, and I don't delight at all in Odell's misfortunes. I don't. But I will admit that when I read this article and I see that picture, I can't help but think to myself, my God, I am glad I'm not that person. Anyway, here's more from the Washington Post. It says, Pax is not alone in rejecting the notion that relationships uh, acknowledged on February 14th have to include romance and sex. Roughly 1% of lesbian, gay, and bisexual Americans are asexual, according to a study from the Williams Institute at the University of California, Los Angeles. Although experts such as Jennifer Pollitt, assistant director of gender, sexuality, and women's studies at Temple University in Philadelphia, believe the population is undercounted and its influence underestimated because of a lack of awareness. Sexual intimacy is often placed on a pedestal to sell products, especially for Valentine's Day, Pollitt said. But love without romance or sex is just as valid and fulfilling for asexual and aromantic people. As more people understand that, there will be more support for people exploring their relationship wants, hopes, and needs. In the meantime, many people on the A spectrum, also known as A-spec or A-spec, an umbrella term for anyone who identifies as asexual and aromantic, are finding creative ways to define the holiday on their own terms. Now, the article does continue providing along the way more examples and anecdotes of asexual and aromantic people celebrating Valentine's Day, but I think we've probably already heard quite enough. We've heard, for example, um, this sentence. Again, roughly 1% of lesbian, gay, and bisexual Americans are asexual. Now, let's think about that. Bisexual Americans are asexual. That is exactly like saying that 1% of polytheistic people are atheistic, or that 1% of empathetic people are apathetic. You cannot be something and also the negation of that thing at the same time. If somebody is sexually attracted to two sexes or sexually attracted to the same sex, that means they do experience sexual attraction, which would seem to preclude them from claiming the title of asexual. But then again, we must remember the first rule of the LGBT cult, which is that they can make it up all as they go along, and nothing they say has to comport with anything else they say. And they must never be held to even the most basic standard of coherence. That's why any attempt to nail down a definition of what qualifies as asexual or aromantic 
will ultimately wind up as fruitless as any attempt to get anyone on the left to give a definition of literally any other word they use. Have you ever heard of a data broker? They're the middlemen collecting and selling all those digital footprints that you leave online, which includes your browsing history, online searches, and location data. And they sell it off to a company that delivers you a really targeted ad. To actually stop people from monitoring and selling your online activity, you need to do what I do and use ExpressVPN. Think about all the times you've used Wi-Fi at a coffee shop, hotel, even a friend's house. Without ExpressVPN, every site you visit can be logged by the admin of that network. Uh, that's still true even when you're in incognito mode. ExpressVPN is an app that encrypts all of your network data and reroutes it through a network of secure servers so that your private online activity stays private. ExpressVPN works on all your devices. It's super easy to use. The app has one button you tap to connect and your browsing activity is secure. It's as simple as that. Stop letting strangers invade your online privacy. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show. Use my link at expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show to get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show. To prove my point, here's the Cambridge University website attempting to delineate between these two categories of asexual and aromantic. This is what it says. Asexuality is an orientation defined by a lack of sexual attraction. That means that an asexual or ace person experiences little or no sexual draw towards others and has little or no desire to have sexual relationships with other people. However, the asexual spectrum has many nuanced identities that fall under the umbrella term asexual. Some of the more common ones are gray sexuality or gray asexuality, where someone experiences sexual attraction rarely or infrequently. Another common identity is demisexuality or demi-asexuality, where someone only experiences sexual attraction after forming a close emotional or romantic bond with another person. There are many other identities on the ace spectrum, um, but what they all have in common is the lack to varying extents of sexual attraction. A romanticism, on the other hand, is an orientation characterized by a lack of romantic attraction. While asexuality is a sexual orientation, a romanticism is a romantic orientation, and the two don't necessarily correlate. Someone may be asexual, but not aromantic, or vice versa, or they may be on both spectrums. An aromantic or aro person experiences little to no romantic attraction towards other people and has little or no desire to form a romantic relationship with anybody else. Like asexuality, aromanticism is a spectrum which includes gray romanticism or gray aromanticism, where someone occasionally or rarely experiences romantic attraction, and demiromanticism or demi aromanticism, where someone only experiences romantic attraction after forming a strong emotional bond with another person. Aromanticism is considered an umbrella term that encompasses all the identities that fall on the aromantic spectrum. Make sense now? Now, there's a lot going on here. Actually, uh, let me amend that. Uh, there is nothing going on here. This is a whole lot of nothing, which is trying to sound like something. It's a bunch of narcissistic, fart-sniffing mumbo-jumbo dressed up to sound complex and nuanced, when in fact all the complexities and nuances are just varying degrees of self-contradiction. There's actually no meaningful distinction between sexual attraction and romantic attraction. The two terms are synonyms. If a person told you that they were romantically attracted to you, but not sexually attracted, they will have given you no useful information about their feelings towards you. They will, however, have given you useful information about the tedious inner workings of their own inane and pretentious minds. As for demi-aromanticism, or someone who feels romantic attraction especially after forming a strong emotional bond, well, that is simply called being a person. I mean, it's more common that a woman's romantic attractions hinges on an emotional connection. But for men or women, this is a rather normal way for things to work. So here we see again how the LGBT cult, not satisfied to legitimize every degraded fetish they can find, has now set its sight on fetishizing even what's normal and healthy. This is a trick they get away with because, as it turns out, plenty of otherwise normal and healthy people want to be members of the cult. The best way to rack up social capital is to claim membership in the Alphabet Club. That's because LGBT people in the modern United States are not only not oppressed, but are in fact the least oppressed people to have ever walked the face of the planet. But what about actual asexual people? How should we understand those people who really don't experience sexual attraction, and who therefore can validly claim the label of asexual. Well, I think there are a few things to keep in mind about this group. First of all, I'm extremely skeptical that most of the people that claim to be asexual are actually asexual, okay? Because somebody with a low sex drive is not asexual. Someone who doesn't desire romantic relationships is not asexual. 
Keep in mind the left will always do everything it can to inflate the statistics for any of the identity groups that it invents. That's why the leftist group, the Trevor Project, has, has a page on its website with information about asexuals where they stipulate that asexual people might still, quote, fall in love, experience arousal and orgasm, masturbate, and engage in sexual activity. In other words, lots of people they call asexual are not at all, in any definitional sense of the term, really asexual. Most of them are simply just selfish, lonely, depressed people with relatively normal libidos who have chosen asexuality as their identity group in order to give some meaning to their self-centered existence. Like most trendy modern identity groups, this one is, for the most part, just a cover for narcissism. It is a coping mechanism to cover up a character flaw, which is narcissism. But assuming that there does exist a collection of people who truly, and through no fault of their own, have no sexual attraction, no desire to, uh, for no desire for sex at all, no capacity for sexual arousal, etc., then we could say two things about this group. Number one, it's almost certainly very small. It's not going to be anywhere near one percent or even half of one percent. Number two, it's not an identity, least of all a sexual identity. If you truly lack the ability to experience sexual attraction, then something has likely gone awry physiologically. You have an issue that you might try to fix rather than making it into your whole personality. Now, you shouldn't be ashamed. It's not your fault. But you also shouldn't make your inability to experience sexual attraction into the centerpiece of your identity as a human being. Neither does it make sense to be proud of this inability. I mean, the only thing more bizarre than marching around and claiming to be proud of your sexual attraction is marching around and claiming to be proud of your lack of sexual attraction. And that's why today on Valentine's Day, I will not cancel all asexuals. They have enough to deal with, especially on a day like today. Instead, I'm specifically canceling these flag-waving asexuals, like those profiled by the Washington Post, especially the ones who have stuffed animals that they name. They are all today canceled. And that'll do it for this portion of the show. If you want to become a member, so you can watch the Members Block, become a member, and use code Walsh at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Hope to see you over the Members Block. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.